I'm Alicia. I'm from the Sexy, Delicious, Healthy. And I am here today with a good old friend of mine. Well, you're not old, but we've been friends for a long time, and her name is Rye from This Is Grub. Say hi. Hey, Alicia. Thank you so much for having me here. How are you? How was your day? You I'm awesome. Day? Yeah? Awesome. I had an amazing day, and I'm hanging out in my kitchen. Are you in yours? I'm actually in my friend Shandy's kitchen. She is our photographer, and this is her lovely, lovely pristine kitchen. All right, so um, we're here today, ladies, because we're um, starting our the first of our three-part webinar on elixirs, and today we're doing healing herbal elixir, I mean infusions. So we have Rye, Rye here today, and Rye, would you want to tell us a little bit about why we're doing this and what herbal infusions are? Okay, so there's a little bit of a delay, so just bear with me if I'm not saying anything for a second. I promise I'm just, your voice is catching up with you. So I'm going to okay. do my best with this awesome technology we've got going on. So yes, we're talking about healing herbal elixirs tonight. And like you said, this is the first of three classes that we're going to do online. I'm in North Carolina. You're in Massachusetts. It's pretty awesome that we get to reconnect again after 18 years after meeting in college. 18. And, um, we reconnected. I know, it's so weird. Ah. And um, we're not old. We're not old because we drink healing herbal elixirs. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that tonight. Yes, we are. So I love elixirs, right? Elixirs to me, that's a drink that is um, healing and nourishing to the body. And my business, Grub, focuses on foods that heal. And so I found through my own journey with my own struggles with my health, I have a digestive disease, I have celiac disease, and a whole host of problems that um, cropped up over the years. And for me, it, the food was important, but what I've realized is that what I drink is incredibly powerful for how I feel on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. And so I've just developed this whole arsenal of awesome liquids to sip on throughout the day, and they've been huge, a huge part of my healing. That's awesome. That's right. Are you drinking one right now? Are you drinking an infusion right now? Actually, that was water with, that was water, and that's the number one elixir to start with. <laughs> Everybody should be drinking water and a lot of it, um, but I will be drinking water elixirs tonight. Awesome. Me too. So everyone out there, ladies, just know that for some reason tonight we're experiencing a little bit of delay, but we're super excited because we have this awesome technology, and we're working with it. So when we seem like we're a little funny and we're not quite answering each other's question right away. That's the only reason why. We're, we're geeks, but we're not that dorky. <laughs> um, okay, so basically, um, I know that you said that you had celiac and a bunch of other issues, but I really wanted to know how you started Grub, and or this is Grub, and uh, the why of the program, and, and really your own journey, if you'd like to share a little bit. Sure. Well, like I said, my, my work started with myself, right, with so many of us, and my passion grew out of what I was personally learning about the body, about healing, about disease, and, um, you know, everyone around me was getting sick, and I had friends with cancer and family members with cancer in their 30s, in their 20s, and, um, you know, that it just didn't sit right with me. It, I, I don't think it's how it's meant to be, and we all can relate to this, right? So I, I became sort of adamant and on a mission to not get sick um, and to keep my family healthy. I have a little boy with a whole host of food sensitivities and digestive issues from the time he was born, and so as a mom, that sort of primal instinct kicks in, and it was like, I want to know right. everything I can know to help you be well and your best. So um, Grub sort of started as a labor of love. I, I, I started reading and educating myself, and I have a big mouth, so I kept talking. And then people <laughs> started asking me for help, and eventually it grew into a business. Um, a year into the business, I took on an amazing partner, and she's brought a huge 
uh, amount of value to the work that we're doing and the programs that we're launching online. And um, I have become a coach. I went to Duke Integrative Medicine and became an integrative health coach. And so I now have this skill set to really help people make behavioral changes around food. And it's incredibly rewarding work. I absolutely love it. Awesome. We are so, so grateful and happy to have you here today. And right now you're stuck on my screen in the best phase ever. Can I show you what it was? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So it was this. <laughs> For like 10 awesome seconds. Okay. So we are, ha um, what's happening on your screen? Okay. So, so I, I can see and hear you. Can you see and hear me? Now I can. And you're beautiful. Okay, great. Oh, so are you. <laughs> okay, so basically we are doing these two lovely elixirs for you ladies today. Uh, the first one is going to be ginger infusion elixir um, or infusion. And the second is stinging nettle. And so we'll start with the ginger and turmeric which I'm really excited about. Um, ginger and turmeric are anti-inflammatory, and Rihanna has a lot of really great stuff to tell us about it. But um, as she begins to tell you guys about ginger and turmeric, I'm gonna go start to boil some water, and then she's gonna teach us how to quickly peel some ginger. All right? Sounds like a... So ginger, I started with ginger. This is one of the first herbs. It's actually a root, um, but it's also, I consider it an herb. This herb was tremendously helpful for me in pregnancy, actually. Um, it's a very potent anti-nausea uh, and it, actually an anti-vomiting. It can prevent vomiting. Um, and so I actually used to slice the ginger and Alicia will be able to show us in a minute what it looks like. I used to slice it and put it in my cheek pocket and it would keep me from wanting to puke my guts up the whole first trimester. Um, after that, after my pregnancy experience with the ginger, I... ginger in a hot bath and soak in it. And um, after coming out of the bath, wrap myself in towels and just like literally sweat out the cold. Um, and that's when I started to realize how truly powerful this herb is. Um, and then I started to make teas and infusions with it. And that's what we're gonna do today. And an infusion, all that is, it might sound intimidating, it's just a tea that's been steeping for a long time. Oh, there's the ginger, look how pretty it is. This is it's my awesome. beautiful ginger. You can find it in a grocery store. You can find it in an Asian um, grocery store. I am um, just. All right. Well, I'll tell you right just, now. Just um, changing up this. Okay. So I have the ginger here, um, ladies. And Rai told me that the easiest way to peel it actually is that with the a spoon. Are you back? She's having some technical. So she told me that the best way to actually peel it is with a spoon. And um, I'm going to go ahead and try this over here. And hopefully, in the meantime, we get her back on. Actually, this is really easy. I should probably bring it closer so you can see. Um, I've actually yeah, always yeah. tried to cut it, and it takes forever. But you can save a lot more of the root by just like simply scraping off the skin and it comes off really good. Really. How are we doing there friend? Are you back? All right well in the meantime um, I'm going to talk a little bit about ginger in general and what I know about it. I know that anti-inflammatory and I don't know if you guys know a lot about what that means but in a sense uh, there's a lot of inflammation in our bodies, and inflammation is actually a really good thing um, in, in moderation. So inflammation is like when you sprain your ankle and it swells, and when it's swollen, that's inflammation, and that inflammation is there to heal you.
However, in our like society and with all of the cortisol that we produce, um, I actually learned most of this from Rihanna, just so you know. Are you back? Hi, I'm back, and I think I have a better connection. Awesome. I'm telling them about the inflammation, like you know, about how um, you said this before in the past, how our ankle swells, and that's really good for us, but we have too much of it, right? And so why these are these anti-inflammatory um, roots are really so good for us. Would you, you want to take over a little bit on that? And I'm peeling it. I'm using the technique that you showed me. Also. Okay, so why do we want anti-inflammatories? So Alicia did, just did an awesome job introducing this concept, but inflammation is actually a natural reaction of the body, and it's awesome. We need it. So you sprain your ankle, like you said, and it begins to swell. There's inflammation there, and that's the body protecting it and sending blood to it so it heals. Um, but what happens in our stressful world that we live in um, with our toxic air and water and food is that we're constantly experiencing this low level inflammation um, in our bodies. And so when there's that much inflammation happening all the time, that, that stress, that's a stressor, um, creates just this chronic inflammatory situation, which can lead to uh, a whole host of health problems. My sister's a doctor and she always says inflammation is the precursor to every disease. And I believe that. So addressing inflammation, preventing inflammation, treating inflammation is a really huge part of staying well. And elixirs and infusions can help you do that in a really big way. In a really effective and inexpensive way. Yeah, and that's so key for all of the things we're going to talk about in all three of these webinars. Everything is affordable, um, and everything's easy to make and kind of fun and tasty to drink. Like, I don't know, when, I, when I'm feeling overwhelmed with real food and what I have to cook and what I can and can't eat at any given time because my dietary restrictions can be kind of crazy at times, I always know that I can have a, a nutritive um, drink that's going to nourish my body. So the ginger, not just anti-nausea, not just um, helps you sweat, but that anti-inflammatory property is super cool. And it's really tasty. It's kind of spicy. And if you like um, certain Asian foods, ginger is a flavor you're probably acquainted with, and you'll like this ginger infusion. Yeah. And it's also really great for your skin. Well, and that's one thing we didn't mention is that t taking your inflammation down does a lot for staying youthful and glowy. Yes. Um, I'm doing what you told me to do earlier and that I, after I peeled off all the skins with a spoon, I'm just cutting it up as much as I can if you wanted to share why we do that. Yeah, so, so Alicia's cutting up the ginger, and you know what, this doesn't have to be fancy, this doesn't have to be perfect, and you really don't even have to peel the ginger all the way or at all. Keeping the peel on keeps sort of an earthy flavor there, and if you want a pure ginger flavor and you want to expose as much of the root as possible, take that peel off, but then just slice it, just like she's doing, slice up the ginger and put it in the bottom of a mason jar. Um, any heat proof jar will do, yeah, that's gorgeous. A, a mason jar is perfect. I have a, um, a WEC jar that I use. This is um, a fermenting jar. It's a pretty glass jar with a glass lid, and it lives on my counter. And I'm constantly brewing my infusions in it. I think there's a lot to be said for having a favorite jar or a mug. Um, it makes yeah. the process special. So you slice up that ginger, and you put it in the infusion. I did. It's all in, and my, and my filtered water is boiling. And I think that now it's time for turmeric. Do you have some? Because I actually couldn't find any. I always have turmeric. Let me grab it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if ginger was my first love, turmeric is like my love affair that I've, uh, I've found in the last year. If you can see this gorgeous bright orange color that yeah. it has, it's a root and it looks a lot like ginger from the outside. Sometimes it's skinnier than ginger, but it's so beautiful and colorful on the inside. That's the curcumin that makes that orange color. And the curcumin is our magic ingredient here and the one that we're after in this infusion. Right. I've actually um, seen a few things recently. Um, everyone's talking about how turmeric is like the hot new thing. Like everyone's in, into it right now. It's because if, if ginger has a whole list of reasons it's awesome, turmeric has a list about seven times longer than ginger in terms of its yeah. 
um, potential to neutralize free radicals. It's really powerful anti-inflammatory benefits. Um, cancer treatment and prevention, study after study after study is sort of really mind blowing what we're finding out about turmeric and people with rheumatoid arthritis and even osteoarthritis and anyone with joint pain and inflammation, obvious inflammation in the joints that's holding you back, turmeric is one that you want to add to your arsenal um, in a very big way. That's awesome. I actually also saw something recent that said there's a lot of new research on it um, helping or preventing Alzheimer's. So that's and, amazing. Yeah, it really is incredible. So definitely you want to you want to try this and add it to your, you know, it's using curries, it's using mustard, but here you can really get a really strong and great dose of it on a daily basis. And later we're going to tell you how to use these infusions in a lot of different ways. So yeah, we Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. Everything you just said is amazing. I think it even has cl cholesterol lowering capabilities. So we um, that's kind of fun too. So you're going to do the same exact thing that you did with the ginger with the turmeric. Yes. And I don't have turmeric, but I discovered this new fun little guy um, at the store. He has a fun name. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, I really should have figured that out. But it's Thai ginger. I know. I know. I'm like getting ready for, I don't know if you know, if we have our food shoot on Saturday. So I'm, I'm Oh, totally for, your, for your big cookbook? Yes, yes, we are, are finishing up the food, um, the food shoot, the spring and summer shoots for our cookbook, and we'll be done with that. It's really exciting. What um, do you want to take? Tell me real quick about the cookbook because I know we wanted to talk about it at some point, and this is a good time to do it. I'm so curious, and I'm helping out a little bit with some of the food stuff. I want to know more yeah. though. That's right. So Rye actually is coming on, and she's looking at our recipes, and she's going to go through them and sort of share, and it will be available with each recipe, why the recipe is so nourishing and good for us. Um, so I'll tell you guys a little bit more about SDH later, but basically, uh, right now, SDH is working on not only these webinars, but we're also working on a cookbook. And the cookbook shares stories from women, and the stories are about their complicated relationship with food. and not and their body. And not only are we sharing these stories, but we're also sharing beautiful, whole, nutrient dense recipes that are, you know, sort of one of our sayings, as I'm sure you've seen it before, is trash your diet. We're really sort of trying to like move that aside and feed ourselves in a nourishing, abundant way. Um, actually, might as well just share it now and then we can get this or this part like through. But um, so we believe in two things right now, and we're, we're starting with the individual part of the process that SDH is aiming for. And so the first is that we are trying to encourage women to be honest and authentic about their relationship with food. And because we, are, we don't just eat food. I really wish that we could just eat food, but we don't. We have a really complicated relationship with it. We love it. We hate it. We eat something bad, and then the next day, lots of women decide to restrict. We don't know what we're eating. We've been taught to eat the wrong things. I mean, right? Isn't the food pyramid like totally whack nowadays? Um, we right. So, so this relationship is really complicated, and we want to come forward and say, my relationship's complicated. It's not the relationship I want, and I'm going to take responsibility for that. That's number one. And number two is to learn nutrition and to learn how to reparent ourselves with food. So reparenting is, is a therapy term. I'm a therapist, so like this is the way I think. But um, to learn about how to feed yourself and live in abundance, power up, really, is what we want to think about. Um, and so every meal that we make is really like there to heal us and to, re, you know, to give back love to ourselves. So that's it. <laughs> I'm so I think that's so yeah. amazing. It's so amazing that you're putting it into a cookbook and the, everything that you stand for so completely aligns with what Liz and I, my partner, stand for in our work. Um, we love to say that um, feeding yourself good food is a powerful act of self-love. Yes. Yes. Don't let me yeah. steal it. If I accidentally steal it later, you all heard it here. <laughs> that's my catchphrase, not yours. <laughs> Um, okay, so All this right. little beautiful Thai ginger 
Um, he's really special, and, and we're going to learn more about him, and hopefully we can send out some stuff about him in our – we're going to send you guys out a newsletter after that shares what we did tonight. Um, but I'm going to yeah. peel him up and chop him up really quick. Okay, right. so turmeric, you're getting to that part, and we can talk about how to use these – Yes. If you've got a microplane, one of those nifty long grater things that they use on the Food Network all the time, both the turmeric and the ginger um, respond really well to being grated with the microplane. And you can add them to anything, vegetables, meat, soups, stews. Um, the turmeric has this really earthy, lovely, it's a much milder than the ginger, I think. It doesn't have quite that same sharpness that the ginger has. And we're combining them in this particular infusion because I think they complement each other well. And the two together, just the anti-inflammatory benefits make this just a powerhouse infusion. So use the turmeric, use the ginger. I think turmeric, um, this is what gives curry its awesome color, but I think turmeric is amazing on cauliflower. You know, oh, cauliflower is sort of, yeah, it's like a new, kind of a neutral veggie and the turmeric just complements it beautifully. And I, from what I understand, if you add black pepper to any recipe where you're also using turmeric, you're enhancing that curcumin, the power of the curcumin just exponentially. So yeah, I did. I did learn that recently. Yeah, you want black pepper and turmeric at the same time. That's great. Okay, so this is about boiled. Can you guys okay. see? Yeah. So we can see you making your infusion. And what you're demonstrating so beautifully right now is how insanely simple it is to make this infusion to make any infusion just this long steeping tea concept. Okay, and so you want to cap it perfect. You want to cap it right away. We want to trap that steam in there, um, and you want to prevent any of that amazing medicine that's coming out of the plant from escaping. And what you're going to do is let this infusion sit on your counter or wherever, just not in the refrigerator. We want it to sit at room temperature for, I think, a minimum of four hours. Mm -hmm. Um, typically, I just leave it overnight because that's easy to remember. Do it at night before bed. In the morning, um, your infusion is done and ready to drink. Right. And I actually magically have one here <laughs> that I made. Yeah. Okay. And I have not opened or tasted yet. Perfect. So you can give us your real-time reactions to a long steeping infusion with turmeric and ginger. It's probably room temperature at this point, but give it give it a taste and let us know honestly, honestly what you think. Okay. It smells amazing, actually, really amazing. It's lovely. It's so light, actually. There's like there's heat to it and spice to it, but I expect it, like it's like a really a super pleasant flavor. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad you like it. And that's just the base. That's just the beginning. Mm. So, you know, leave it at that if you're wanting to be low maintenance, if you've got three kids running around or even one kid or no kids, life is overwhelming. And that is an amazing drink in and of itself. If you want to add to it, um, there's a couple ways I drink it. A lot of times I'll just take that whole jar and pop it right in the refrigerator once it's done and okay. store it for, for a couple of days. And then in the mornings I pull that jar out. It's like the first thing I do. I pull it out. I put it in my favorite mug. Here's my mug that I live for. All right, a little clay mug, and I, um, you can stir a little sweetener into it, um, a little bit of honey, and then you can, I microwave it, um, and I'm fine with that, but you can warm it in a pot on the stove if you want, mm -hmm. and I drink it warm in the morning as a tea, and I'm one of those people that wakes up with kind of a queasy stomach, sometimes a stomach ache, and I know a lot of folks can, um, can relate to that. So this is like, by the time I'm finished sipping on this, and it doesn't even have to be much more than this, I'm not nauseous. Um, my stomach doesn't hurt. Sometimes I can go right to the bathroom. It's like it gets things just kind of <laughs> soothed and moved along. And man, doesn't a good poop right at the beginning of the day just set the best <laughs> Yes. I love it. I love right? it. Right? So I decided yesterday that I was going to start taking this um, with me to amusement parks. So I can like get on more of those spinny rides that I never could do before. Well, they're, 
proven anti-nausea benefits. So, and you can, all right? So you don't have to drink it as a tea. Take it to the amusement park in your water bottle, put some ice cubes in it, um, a handful of fresh mint, which grows just so beautifully and in abundance here. Um, and you've got yourself an, you know, an iced drink that's going to have all of these amazing benefits, taste really good, and be something a little different than water. You know, it, it gets a little tiring to just drink water all the time. And so this was steeping for a whole day. Is that what you recommend, or do you recommend longer or shorter? A minimum of four hours, but go for as long as you want. You know, you said that tasted kind of light, and it sat for 24 hours. Well, I would suggest then if you wanted more flavor, don't, don't steep it for longer. Add more ginger and turmeric. Okay. And mine actually, unfortunately, it has this amazing Thai ginger, which it does have a different texture, but it doesn't have the turmeric. So I'm excited to get that and be able to experience that part of it. Oh, um, that's right. Okay, yeah. Yes, yeah. So maybe that's why it's a little bit lighter. But um, I had another oh. thing. Absolutely. Let me just tell you, there's two other ways that I use that. So not just oh, for okay. drinking tea or drinking it iced. I use it as a base in smoothies. Really? And that's it, it adds a, a really nice, light, subtle background of flavor. I don't want to use juice, and I don't really drink milks, even not based milks. And right. water is kind of whatever and boring. So this is my smoothie base. And I feel like I'm getting all of those benefits of the infusion and also making my morning smoothie taste awesome, which is always a good thing. Do you have any like suggestions of recipe that you would want to? Yeah. Well, so if you go to my website, go to my website, actually, anybody who's listening, this is grub.com. Okay. And if you sign up for our newsletter, you get this amazingly beautiful, my partner's um, husband illustrated it, this smoothie matrix. And it gives you all of the proportions for making an amazing green smoothie every single time. That's great. Yeah, That's it, it awesome. is. It's, it's, it's a really handy tool. A lot of people keep it just taped inside a cabinet door in their kitchen and um, use that ginger infusion in it. And um, the other way I use the ginger infusion, and I just did this tonight, is I use it when I'm cooking to deglaze the pan to what, of whatever I'm cooking. Okay. So again, I was making cauliflower. I'm a really big fan of cauliflower these days. And yeah. it was cooking in my cast iron skillet, but it was still like kind of crunchy and hard and I was feeling a little impatient. So I splashed some of the infusion in and I put the lid on it and it just kind of like created some steam and bubbled away in there and yep. it softened the cauliflower and cooked it beautifully. And then when I ate it, it was infused with the infusion. It was awesome. That's awesome. That's really awesome and easy. And like she said in the beginning, you can just, I would probably just drink it, but yeah, I love the tea idea. I love the smoothie idea. I love deglazing idea. And um, actually ladies, I think we're going to let like take some questions or maybe suggestions sort of at this time while we prepare to do our next infusion. So I don't know if you guys have any thoughts that you want to share with us. But, yes, um, please. We want to hear from you. It oh, feels hold on a second. Holding, holding, holding. I'm actually grabbing my computer just in case we have more technical difficulties. Okay, so. Does anybody oh, like okay. us? Is anybody watching? Yes, see, we have. <laughs> so the first one was a suggestion, and it's really fun. I want to share it. We want okay. to see the redhead figure. We can't see her making the elixir. So <laughs> I'm really sorry, actually, I didn't think of this. You get to see whoever um, predominantly is talking. And, and it seems like when I'm making the elixir, I'm not talking as much, so you're seeing her. But um, we will have for you a handout so that you know. And basically, I did just scrape off the, the, the skins, chop it up, put it in the bottom of the mason jar, pour it over with really boiling water and cap it as soon as possible. And then left it again for the 24 or four to however long you want to leave it for. Um, so I hope that helps. And next time maybe we will get a cameraman in here to like, put like camera snort on in. All right. So um, our second question actually was, this is from Max Murphy. Yeah. There's no volume on my computer. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Unfortunately, when I'm on my computer, even though it's 
I can't hear you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yep. Okay. So um, we're learning so much about what works and what doesn't, aren't we? We are. So I have another question. Um, this is from Max Murphy, and they wanted to know what the what name the of the star was again. Yes. Sorry, say that last part. I'm here. I can hear you now. I, what I the name of that jar? Phone. What the name of that jar was again? The, I think your beautiful jar. Yeah, so this is called um, a WEC jar, and it says WEC on the side, W-E-C-K, and I got it at World Market, and it's got this gorgeous glass lid that just that is rests gorgeous. on it, and I think it was like $8. I mean, it really wasn't expensive, and I was I got it to make sauerkraut in, and I'm a total failure at making sauerkraut, so I just use it for my <laughs> nice. infusions. Yeah. Um, but a great, a, a great jar, and you can get them online for whoever asked that, World Market or look online, W-E-C-K. Okay. Um, then we got another comment that said, this is awesome. So our delays and our weird, funny faces and not being able to hear each other is going okay. Um, oh, and maybe it was my mom. Oh, okay. And then um, another friend said, wants to know where we can find fresh turmeric. Yeah, that's a great question. So turmeric is a little harder to find than ginger. Um, it's carried at my local cooperative market. Um, and so you'll want to, wherever you ladies live, check to see if you have a co-op. Um, it's always amazing to belong to and um, have access to the fresh, local, and often organic foods that a co-op offers. And I do believe that our Whole Foods has turmeric too, if you look in the produce section. Um, and at any store, always ask, uh, you know, and they can special order it, or um, it may be just one of those weird ones that's hanging out on a shelf near, like, the strains yucca root and stuff that we never buy. So it's probably there. Um, so I have a question, actually. So let's say I see turmeric, but I wasn't going to make an infusion, but until, like, next week. <laughs> this is just totally hypothetical. And how long can I have it for? Like how yeah, long great you know, question. So both turmeric and ginger um, are pretty shelf stable. I mean, it's a hard root that can hang out for a while. The only thing is that if they've been hanging out in your grocery store for a long time and they're starting to get a little bit shrivelly once you get them home, you can throw them in your freezer, actually, and it'll just stop them from, from aging um, and preserve them. It's actually just my business partner constantly has huge chunks of ginger in the freezer and it grates really well once it's frozen actually and you can hack it up and use it in the infusion exactly the same but i mean sometimes this sits on my counter for two weeks or so and it's just fine okay that's really good to know um okay and then we have um i want to say that this person's name is bonnie hi I bonnie and tell. Um, my life is so busy. Do you really take the time to do this? Yes. Um, and then something, This is this realistic for a busy mom and wife? Yeah, such an amazing question. Um, I mostly work with women who are busy and overwhelmed, and I myself am very busy and overwhelmed. I run a small business. I have a six-year-old. Um, I have a husband, a lot of community obligations, and so, um, this to me, something simple like this is completely doable um, if you start getting into the habit of caring for yourself in the kitchen. Yeah. So just like I wash my face or brush my teeth, and yeah, as a busy mom, sometimes those don't happen, nor does a shower happen oftentimes, and I'll be the first to admit that, but something like this, like I can do all the stuff on the outside of me that I want to try and look better, but it, it falls completely flat if what's happening on the inside isn't so there. Right. And so, yeah, you may have a crap day and you may be going through the drive through and you may not be making the most amazing choices with food. But the concept with elixirs here is that it is really simple to create drinks that you can at the very least feel amazing at the end of the day and say, OK, I may have had a crap day with my food choices and my stress. But look at what this awesome thing is that I can do for myself right now. Yeah, I actually want to ask you, too, how long is this going to last me for this jar? So I made this today. Well, actually, knowing me, because I've already drank like half of it, <laughs> it's going to last me today. But most people, how long would this last you? 
Sure. I don't have a hard and fast answer because I drink it within a week or so, but there have been times where the jar gets pushed to the back of the refrigerator and I kind of find it maybe two or three weeks later. And I'm like, I wonder if this is good. And I have, you know, I feel comfortable and I'm kind of a little germaphobe with food. I've drank it when it's about three weeks old. Just use your best judgment, smell it, look at it. This stuff is really potent anti-inflammatory. I don't think it goes bad very easily, to be honest with you. So okay. let it hang out in the fridge for I would say maybe two weeks would be, you know, the max uh, okay. you want to play with. But yeah, once you make it and it's there and you have those moments where you open the fridge, like, ugh, I want something. I don't know what I want. Reach for the ginger infusion and see if that doesn't just nourish you a little bit. Right. Okay. I have a really great one. It says, sorry if this is TMI, but my stomach is always bloated and I have trouble going to the bathroom. Will this drink help me? I love that question. Everybody should poop regularly. Yes, pooping is the key to happiness. So, um, you know, there may be a couple of things going on. In a scenario where this person is bloated and constipated, um, you know, a, a, a ginger infusion can help. And the only way to know is to try it, right? Our bodies are all so different. But I would also say that maybe this is an opportunity to look a little deeper at um, and tune in and listen to your body, whoever this person is. There are probably some things that you're eating or um, some stress or something you're doing that's contributing to how you feel. Um, and so tune in and listen. Notice whether it's worse after a day of a lot of um, milk or cheese. Um, you know, this is the kind of work I actually do with my clients in my coaching business. I don't diagnose them, but I help them to tune in and listen and figure out, wow, what's going on with me and my digestive system and how can food and self-care change how I feel and in turn change my life. Like when we feel bad, life feels bad. And so um, I myself experienced the profound shift that comes from what can happen when you feel really good in your body and just the right. potential for a full life is there when you feel awesome. And so it's about finding out how you can feel awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I completely, and I love how you said that pooping is the key to happiness because like really, if you want to feel good in your body and light and free, if you want good skin, like it all is, oh, and actually I should probably share this because this is my field. We make 70% of our serotonin in our gut mm -hmm. and we, people are taking antidepressants and all of these things to sort of hold the serotonin a little bit longer in between the synapse and the neurotransmitter so it doesn't get sucked up as soon just to keep it there. But it's trying to keep the little bit of serotonin that we're making. And we mm. can exercise and do all these wonderful things, but it's 70%, I mean, that's most of it, you know, obviously, is made in our gut and our digestion is off. We're not making that. And if we're not making serotonin, we're not happy. That's such a fantastic point and totally fascinating. And you know what? In our next one, when we talk about bone broth in, in number two, we'll, yep. we can really dig into this gut health stuff and how it affects not just our physical health, but our mental health as well. Okay. So we have two more. We're going to go super quick because we have to move on to the next one because we wanted to do an hour. Okay. So, um, oh, actually, it's kind of what you were just talking about. It's what other services does Rihanna offer? And how do we contact her? Yes. So I am a, I know, thank you. Whoever asked that, I would love to work with you. And actually, I offer a free, no pressure, no sales pitch, no hard sell conversation to anybody that just wants to see if we're a match for each other. Um, about 20 minutes on the phone or by Skype. And it, it, we can really dig into what you want for your health and how partnering with me can help you to move there. Um, so go to my website, thisisgrub.com. And um, services over on what we offer tab, the first thing is coaching with Rye. And it'll tell you more about me, my story, the services that I offer. And then you can just click the red button on that page and contact me. It'll go right to my email box and we can schedule a time to connect with each other. Okay. I want to definitely plug one thing about you that you did for me that's like very real. So I actually have had a, a horrible year and a half with some hormonal issues that I didn't ever experience in the past where I would get my period uh, again and again and again and again and again. I bled for 20 days last April. I felt like I was always having PMS, always getting my period. 
and many suggestions were made to me. I took all kinds of different supplements and herbs, and I'm still working on the process, but Ryanna suggested that I go gluten-free. Now, I've never had digestion problems with gluten. I've tried to go off it and on it. I know a lot of people do, but I haven't. Um, however, I have found now that I avoid gluten. I don't completely not eat gluten, just so you know. For the first month, I didn't, but now I'll have gluten once in a while. Um, I notice it when I do. But uh, mm. my periods actually now for the past three months have been on time. Like, no joke. Perfectly on time. So, just going to say that. Okay. Last awesome. one. What can I do? This is Kristen. What can I do to bring down the inflammation in my ankle after surgery? Oh, that's right. We know Kristen. She's in our, our group, and she just had surgery. And oh. I this will help her, if these will help her at all. But she is really inflamed, um, and she wants to go back to work, and she's supposed to cook with us all day Saturday. So if you have any ideas, let her know. Well, Kristen, we hope you get better soon. I think drinking these infusions and actually the nettles that we're going to make next may be helpful for her. Um, if she doesn't have, um, you know, stitching or wherever in an area away from it, you can actually take the stinging nettles infusion that we're going to make and you can create um, compresses with it physically on the body to help with pain. Um, but I mean, this is a perfect segue into the nettles. So let's um, All right, talk let's talk about do another kind of infusion, something, again, super simple and incredibly, incredibly powerful herb here. Okay. Um, okay. So we're going to move on to the singing nettle. I had a couple more questions, but we'll, we'll save more questions until the end. Okay. okay. Awesome. So awesome. So I have one made here, but we'll start fresh. Um, I'm just going to quickly turn this back on. Oh, I think I have to do it on this side because we have to right back. Okay. All right. So, stinging nettle. So, yay, stinging a nettles. I went on a search for stinging nettle. I've never used or bought it before. Um, so I'm really super excited. And I want to let you know that I found it on a place called Cambridge Naturals. Um, I live in Boston, so that's my place to go. And what I want to share with you ladies, because I was really excited about this, when I went there, there's this huge, amazing, like, library of beautiful herbs and things. And I ended up buying calendula flowers and French clay mm. and, and this and lavender and a whole bunch of other things. And when I left, I was charged $7. <laughs> $7. For these things, and and so that's another reason why I wanted to share that because it really is cheap and accessible, and um, for the health benefits, you cannot beat it because we spend so much money on our health, and like for what she's gonna tell you, this stuff does, you cannot beat it. All right, so I want to say okay. That. So awesome and amazing plug for stinging nettles. And here's, I have this huge jar that I keep up in my pantry too of the dried stinging nettles. So some of you might know of stinging nettles as this invasive pesky weed that grows in these huge patches and actually can really sting you if you brush against it, if you fall into it, if you walk through a patch, there are stingers all over this weed. And so um, it's, it's invasive and it's considered a pest, but when you look a little deeper at the research and the information about this particular weed, it's an absolutely amazing, abundant source of nutrients. Um, it's loaded with vitamins. It's very rich in minerals, especially iron. And I think for a lot of women out there and women listening to this call, um, iron deficiency, low iron, I mean, we lose it every month. We definitely lose it when we have children, especially if you've had more than one close together. Um, your iron needs may be very, very high, and you might not be getting enough of it from food. Um, if you've ever tried to supplement iron, you know taking an iron supplement can be constipating. Um, your body may not even absorb okay. the iron from a pill. So getting your nutrients from nature, like with this infusion, is a really powerful way to, to soak up the mineral goodness. I actually raised my long-term iron storage like 
40 points using um, stinging nettles. And my nurse practitioner actually had to say to me after a year of this, like, you need to slow down with the nettles because your iron levels are getting crazy high. And when I started, they were so low. She had said to me, I don't, I don't know how you're walking right now. I don't know how you have the energy to walk. So this is an incredibly powerful plant that's used for a lot of women used during pregnancy and breastfeeding. It's a uh, galactagogue. It, it can create more breast milk. Um, and it's really rich in chlorophyll, actually. That's awesome. And you, I remember you saying, too, that it's, like, very high in vitamin C. Beyond it, yeah, there are... Yeah. There's several vitamins that it's high in, and I can't remember what they are at the moment, but actually the chlorophyll one is the, is the part that most excites me. That's the green part of the plant um, that's extremely nutritive and detoxifying and healing to the body. And so okay. when we get that chlorophyll, and it actually closely matches our hemoglobin, our, the human blood, um, it's deeply nourishing to the blood, especially those minerals. So it's a, it's in a, a fantastic infusion. And again, like the other one, maybe even less work than the first infusion. Awesome. So just to share with you right now, it has an amazing smell. I can't place what it smells like, but it's lovely. And um, I don't know how much I have about here, but it looks like about a cup. And you said to use about a cup. Yep, about a cup. So the great thing about herbs, and you can tell from the last one, it's, there's no exact recipe you have to follow, but a cup or like a big handful um, in the bottom of the same kind of quart size mason jar that you use for your last infusion, or you can use a WEC jar if you so choose. Um, and again, get your boiling water going for this infusion. Yeah, yep. Perfect. And I'll let you talk so you're big. Oh, okay, ladies. So I'm pouring the water, the hot water over the stinging nettle, as you can see. And just like what I said before, I'm going to really quickly cap it. Perfect. And voila. It's beautiful. So you'll notice the herb is all kind of floating up at the top. That's just fine and totally normal. And then the same exact thing as the other infusion. Set it aside on your counter. And if you're busy and overwhelmed, put it in a spot you know you're going to look, right? Put it right next to your blender or your coffee maker. Wherever you know you're going to look in the morning, put your infusion there so you're reminded to strain it a minimum of four hours on the stinging nettle to get all of those benefits. And what's happening is that hot water is just like the medicine in these plants is just being pulled into the hot water. And so literally we're infusing all these nutrients into the water. And after four hours, again, I do it overnight. I think that's just the easiest. You're going to end up with some delicious stinging nettles. Look at that. So this one is very green. This is my 24 hour stinging nettle infusion. Um, and while you talk, Rihanna, I'm just going to pour this over. Oh, if I can open it. There we are. Um, I'm going to strain it. Can you ladies see? So I'm just using this little strainer. Perfect. Are. So you're straining out the plant material. So with the ginger and the turmeric, you can just kind of leave it hanging out in the bottom of the infusion. But with this one, you definitely want to strain the herbs out. Um, okay. And any mesh strainer will do. And transfer your stinging nettles infusion, your, your liquid green liquid gold, into whatever vessel you want to store it in. Okay. So another mason jar works great. So you do. And then you have not tasted this. No, I haven't. I wanted to say before I taste it, you usually do it um, four hours. No, you usually do it overnight. But this was 24. What do you, and you wanted me to take them out. So what's the max for Stephen? You know, and I can um, consult with my partner, Liz, on this one. She's a herbalist. But I would say don't go over 24 hours. I think really that overnight, that 12-hour mark, is probably plenty. At that point, the water's at room temperature. The, the plant has probably given off everything that it's going to give you. Um, okay. and, and your water is infused and done at that point. Okay. So here's my water. <sighs> Oh my god. So, <laughs> it looked to me scarier than it tastes. It's actually, again, 
really light and pleasant and it just has like you know if you were drinking spa water or something and it had like lovely um the cat got out okay there sorry there's a cat that got out the window <laughs> okay so um yeah if you had sort of herbs in your spa water with some fruit it's like that it's That's lovely. a great way of putting it. Yeah, it, it looks really green. And folks, usually when I make it and serve it to them, are like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm not drinking that. And when they do, it is surprisingly light. It's gr kind of the best way I can describe it is sort of grassy. Um, it's just green. It's just this lovely light green drink. And honestly, you don't need a lot to get all the benefits. Yeah, it's re yeah, it's actually really lovely. Like this is very, very, very easy to drink. And I'm actually wondering, um, we never talked about this before, if I could add a little bit of this to my water, like my spa water. So I don't know if you ladies make spa water. Um, it was a friend of mine that called it that a while ago, and now I hear a lot of people calling it that. I used to work with her last year. Her name is Alexa, and she's awesome. But um, maybe some water with whatever kind of fruit you put strawberries and basil or pineapples and cinnamon or something like that. And I'm wondering if I can add this, a little bit of this to my water and then my fruit and drink that through the day. Amazing. That's a, an amazing idea. Um, you can freeze it in ice cube trays and put nettles cubes in your water. So it just sort awesome. of melts into your spa water all day. You can, yeah, put a splash in your water bottle. You know, I drink, I try to drink three of these a day. So if I just put like a, a generous splash in each one of these, I've had my cup of metals for the day and I've gotten those nutritive benefits. Um, a lot of women say they feel energized when they drink the nettles. Um, yeah. Some women use it to replace one of their cups of coffee if they've got, you know, get got gotten to that point where they're relying on the coffee so much and they're drinking more and more and more um the nettles not only can replace the coffee for some folks but they offer those adrenal supporting benefits Ooh, can you tell us a little bit about adrenal supporting benefits because i am not sure if a lot of people really know when they hear that what that really means i know that you know, sure so but we hear it often so it's true, and it's a big buzzword right now. So the simple part of it is I know we're getting close on time and we want to take more questions, but to put it simply, we have these adrenal glands that are over our kidneys um, towards the bottom of our back, and they're responsible for um, releasing our stress hormones, um, mostly the cortisol that we've all heard of, right? And so just like we're always experiencing this low-level inflammation that we talked about earlier, and that same vein, it's because of this low-level stress that we're all experiencing. So right. even if you say like, well, I don't feel stressed, I'm not a stressed out person, I'm a happy person, the world that we live in is very stressful um, to yeah. our bodies, to, yeah. to our person. Um, so that uh, those adrenal glands are constantly releasing that cortisol, they're constantly giving us that adrenaline that burst of you know fight or flight that like right. that response and um, we start to kind of deplete our adrenals and um, stuff like coffee can be depleting to adrenals too much caffeine um, keeping you sort of juiced up um, and when the uh, adrenals become depleted um, you can experience adrenal fatigue which is just this kind of like inability to to be vibrant and awake and you know, present in your life, it's, a, it's a, right. an exhaustion that can happen with a lot of moms, especially. So right. supporting your adrenals um, with herbs like stinging nettles can be a, a really fantastic way to care for yourself in this stressful time of life. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I love that the ginger is really great for the pregnant mom. Mm -hmm. And the stinging nettle is really great for the nursing mom. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, I do actually need to go over, there were some suggestions to like go over a little bit again, I guess we'll, we'll refigure it out next time so I'm a little bit closer with this stuff, but basically if you didn't see, just like with the ginger, um, I poured in about a cup of stinging nettle into my jar, right, um, about a cup of, and this is, and this is um, a one quart mason jar, and she has that beautiful wax jar, um, this green one was like the 1913 circa 1915 version um and then i just poured it with hot filtered water spring water something like that um boiling water capped it immediately if you can see it um this one's hot so i'm not gonna pick it up but it's very hot 
and you're just gonna leave it on the counter, like she said, overnight. Um, and for the stinging nettles, I think the ginger can stay in for longer, but the stinging nettles she suggested for 24 hours max, and I think you're suggesting yeah. one cup a day of stinging nettle, right? Whereas I feel like the ginger turmeric you can go forever with, the stinging nettle is one cup a day. Yeah, you really don't want to. It is so powerful and so mineral rich. Um, you don't need more than a cup of day. Yeah. Okay. I love it. So I'm actually wondering if we have any more questions at this point um, from women that we want to share. And then in the meantime, while maybe the questions are coming up, if you wanted to tell us anything more about this is scrub, there's so much for you to share. I know that you have um, amazing Facebook page. I I don't do Twitter. Don't tell anybody because sexy. I don't get it. Does Twitter? <laughs> um, because we have awesome Shani who does Twitter. And okay, so we have some other stuff on here. Let's see. So okay. real quick, I just want to tell everyone we have yeah. the launch in the next month we're launching an online real food for real life workshop and this is the culmination of the last three years of work that we've been doing with women specifically and right. we've taken all of that knowledge and all of the support we've given them and this it have put it into the six-week course that's not just hey eat this not that this is a course to help you kind of dig in to what you want out of your relationship to food and decide what what changes you want to make how sustainably you want to move towards eating real food because honestly we're all on our journey and we're all at a different place and there's a lot of pressure in this sort of trendy food world right now to be all or nothing with this, to be eating all your superfoods and doing your green smoothies. And, um, you know, we have sort of putting a little compassion back into the, into the real food scene and saying, wherever you're at, that's awesome. And if your goal is to just have one real food meal a week um, and get your kids eating some vegetables, that's fantastic. And we're going to be with you and support you every step of the way. So that's our online workshop. And you can go on our website, thisisgrub.com, and you'll say workshop right at the top. And you can sign up to receive alerts about when that's finally launched in the next couple of weeks. That's great. That's great. I can't wait to do that. So, okay. So we have a few more questions. I'm really excited about it. Um, Mary DeMello said she's definitely going to make and try the turmeric ginger elixir. So awesome. Let us know. Yay, Mary. Enjoy. And let us know how you feel about it and if it improves your digestion and all the other things that we talked about. Um, and then another person said, this is awesome, I love it, I can't wait to try it. Do you ever use lemon? Like, I'm assuming lemon with them. Oh. Great question, and actually, that brings up a point I forgot to make. So using lemon specifically with the stinging nettles will actually enhance the absorbability of the, the vitamins, I believe. So combining lemon with the stinging nettles is a not only going to improve the flavor, but it's going to make the um, infusion that much more effective in your body. So hooray for whoever intuitively knew that about lemon and nettles. And yeah, put lemon in the ginger infusion. Lemon's fantastic for you. Um, there's no reason not to squeeze it into something you love to drink. Absolutely. And actually, that's great because we have now, we want to have pepper when we can with our turmeric, right? Yes. And lemon when we can with our stinging nettle. All right. Absolutely. And then um, we also got asked, do you use fresh nettle for the infusion? I actually forgot to say that I got that at Cambridge Naturals, and that is the dried, cut, stinging nettle, which is what Rye told me to get, um, and she's my goddess, so I got that. But this person <laughs> wants to know if she can use uh, fresh nettle for the infusion, and then I have something else I want to share after that that I thought of. Okay, so for it's a great question. For the infusion, use the dried stinging nettle. Um, you're going to get the most benefit from the plant for the infusion. Now, if you are lucky enough to score some fresh stinging nettle, that is cook it up like saute it like spinach or kale and eat it, and you're going to get just loads of those nutrients fresh off the plant. So, yes, eat it fresh if you can, but for the sake of the infusion, go for the dried. All right. And, um, Oh goodness, this always happens to me and I knew it was going to happen. Do you use the fresh oil for the infusion? We use the dry. Oh, okay. So 
we know we need to know where to get these. And we talked about turmeric, and we talked about going to a co-op, and we talked about Whole Foods, and we talked about say we just run into it, and we happen to be lucky enough to find it, and we can keep it for like two weeks, or we can stick it in our freezer, right? Mm -hmm. um, for singing nettle, if you can't find a place that has like a beautiful library of herbs. There are, are some places online that you shared with me last night that you might want to share people can go to to get things like stickies. Yes. Awesome question. It is available online. Um, you're looking for cut, dried, preferably organic stinging nettle. If you can't get the organic, don't stress it. And um, two companies, Frontier makes these huge one pound bags of it that will last you like six months, a year, and I think they're, you know, 20 something dollars. So um, the cost again is amazing frontier. And then Mountain Rose Herbs is a really popular online um, company that sells herbs. And there's a, you know, a place called the Herb Shop online. So you can Google around a little bit, but Mountain Rose Herbs, Frontier, I mean, you could probably go on Amazon because you can get everything on Amazon yes. now and look for some cut dried stinging nettle. Um, and and yeah, then you'll you'll have enough if you get a pound. My gosh, you'll have enough to last you quite a while. Um, and keep it somewhere on yourselves so that you're reminded of, of the benefits of that infusion. And it's not about perfection. It's not about drinking this every day. And if you're not making it and drinking it every, what's the point? And you're screwing it up. And oh well. Um, keep it there. It's in your arsenal. It's one of your tools to pull out when you're feeling low. When you're on your period when you're feeling like you just need a boost and, and you need to take care of yourself and then pull out the nettles and use them. I love it. That's awesome. Really good. Oh, and you know what I was just thinking? We're actually going to be doing sort of a little um, competition, not competition kind of thing, but we want to give away a basket to someone that shares some of our stuff. Um, I think mm -hmm. we're going to try to do this next month and make up a really nice basket. And I think we were going to include your kefir kit, um, yes. which we talk about and which will be our the third section of our elixir series so this was herbal infusions and next is bone broth and third is kefir um, and you have kefir kits that you can buy I believe from you you guys on your website correct and um, so I lost it <laughs> you're you stopped on me but that's okay she will be back so um, like I was saying we <laughs> oh, oh hi come back. <laughs> come back to me are you there i'm here oh, i'm here can you hear me yeah oh the basket so i'm thinking i can easily get some singing nettles for the basket um along with your kefir kit and some and some sprouting stuff and we have some beautiful um, face products from our friends at, at Solstice handcrafted and we'll have some other wonderful things in the basket but I think this is a great idea of something to include so yay this has been uh, a lot of fun despite our, our technical difficulties at the beginning it sounds like people hung out and they really enjoyed it um, and so we're just going to, I guess, keep building on this. And every time we're going to get to hang out in our kitchens and, and make a lecture together. I love it. I love learning. It's really great. Um, we would love to hear from you all. If you make these infusions and you think of new fun ways to use them, that's always great. You know, if you're using them in recipes or other fun stuff. And if you notice anything, that would be great to know too, right? If you notice that you're getting more energy or something changes for you with the stinging nettle, or how you, your digestion feels and other things from drinking the turmeric regularly. I know that I'm gonna be making them definitely. I think what the plan is to do it every three days. And um, that's it, I'm super excited. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Oh, Alicia, this was a lot of fun. It was like hanging out in our jammies in the kitchen. And um, I'm just honored that you asked me to be part of this. And the community of women that you're building at Sexy Delicious Healthy is incredibly inspiring. And um, I wanna make sure that our, our fans know who you are and, and about the incredible work that you're doing to link women back to a healthy relationship with food. It's incredibly important. Yes, and so saying that, I would love for women to share stories. We're really, okay, so what does that mean? Really looking for stories. Okay, so the first part, as I said, so the second part really is learning about nutrient-dense food and how to power up and reparent ourselves with food and give, give to ourselves, like I said, in an abundant, loving way. 
and trashing our diet. <laughs> That's what we like to call it. But um, number one, like I said, is really getting in touch with that relationship that you have with food, the relationship that you have today. And I know that some of us have had journeys and we're in a better place than we were before, or maybe we're not there. And it, but I know, I know how sort of circular life can be. And one day we feel really great and another day maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. And what we want is a place that's really safe where we don't have to pretend anymore that we're not going through this. So this safe place is, um, is sexy, delicious, healthy. And that's what I believe. And this is what the book is. The book is like all these really brave women who were the first woman that came forward and said, I'm going to actually share what's really going on for me. And the stories are beautiful and I, I can't give any of them away, but we do have a series of stories now that are being shared on our website. And every week we have a new submission and a new story that we share. And you can go on there and women are talking about their struggles, struggles with eating disorders from that gamut to women talking about their relationship with their Italian mother and their Italian family and what it was like for them growing up in their relationship with food. And we want to sort of bring that all together. So we're looking for any one story, really. And just talking about actually looking for the first time at, I don't just eat food. I have a relationship with it. And what does that look like? What is wow. Like? And, and how much stronger can I be to finally come forward and say, this is really what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And then have all the other, and usually when it happens, because we've gotten together, we've shared them, everyone else is in the room and they're like, I understand. I mean, I either understand or I can at least feel or be empathetic and sort of feel how that could be possible for you. And some women, you know, are like, I never thought anyone else felt this way. Oh, that's yeah. so amazing. So we'll spread the word about stories. And I'm already thinking, my gosh, I have a story, you know, so let's, um, for your let's, story. let's keep talking. Let's keep collaborating. And in a month, in a month, we'll send everyone the date, right, of our um, bone broth one? Right. We'd like to do it one month. Um, it would be nice to do it one month from today, but, it, you know, we can figure Let's out a it. date exactly. We'll share with you guys that, yes, we're going to be sharing again a number two of our elixirs, and that's bone broth. And um, other than that, I wanted to let you know that my girls love This Is Grub. I'm always hearing about how they love Grub website. So check out Grub website. She shares a lot of recipes and so much facts about how to really feed yourself in an amazing way. Like you said, nourishing your body, right? And you said it better than I do because it's your thing. Pooping, great. <laughs> it's all about the pooping. It's all about the pooping. Alicia, you're amazing. You're amazing. Thank you. I'm going to have to make up so many more reasons for you to hang out with me. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Bring it on. Okay. Um, thank you, ladies. Thank you, everyone, for coming on. Please share this stuff. Like I said, try it, share, and come on next time. Learn some more stuff. Thank you. It was fun. Thank you, Rye. Bye. Talk to you later.